So this is my review of Cameo Elements of Power, and now as always, take my reviews with a pinch of salt, because as you know, it's one man's view, and it's just innate rambling, to be honest. So anyway, Cameo Elements of Power is a Rareware game, and if you don't know who Rare is, I don't know where you've been living for the last century. Rare have a legacy that rivals Nintendo, I mean, they brought out fantastic games, especially over the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo 64, such as Battletoads, GoldenEye, and even Conker's Bad Fur Day, and I love that game, so meh. Even if the, yeah, even if the humour was kind of, you know, yeah, off the rails a little bit. The story of Cameo is actually quite an interesting one. Uh, it was originally intended for the Nintendo GameCube back when Rare were partnered with Nintendo, but was pushed due to, well, Microsoft's buyout of Rare to the Xbox, and then, well, as the Xbox was nearing its end, yep, that sounds very dramatic. As the Xbox was nearing its end, it was then pushed onto the Xbox 360 and came out as a launch title. So it's had a fair bit of controversy around it. Cameo isn't really, in my opinion, up to the fantastic heights of Rare Gaming, but it's by no means a bad game. So what is Cameo actually about? Well, in the world of Cameo, a war has broken out between the trolls and fairies and is literally dominating the entire world. The orcs themselves, oh sorry, trolls, may as well be orcs because they look identical to what I picture orcs as. I mean, they're green, they're hideous, and they're burly. So yeah, that's an orc in my opinion, but no, they're trolls. Anyway, you take control of Cameo, funny that. I mean, you could probably guess, even if you've never seen the game before. The chosen daughter of the Elf King, and you receive the Elemental Warriors at the coming of age ceremony, or at your coming of age ceremony. Now, the Elemental Warriors are basically this game's gimmick and the way you fight, so you, you're able to transform into, I'm not entirely sure, maybe 10 different animals, different creatures to help you fight and, you know, win the world. Anyway, so what's the actual conflict here? Well, your jealous sister Callus, who wanted the Elemental Warriors, decides it's a good idea, for whatever reason, probably just to get attention to be honest, to unleash the King of Trolls, Thorn, from his, well, slumber I guess? I don't know, he was sealed in stone. Yeah, and kidnap her family, so she can presumably, I don't know, perform acts of random evil on her own family, which doesn't really make any sense. It is literally a cry for attention if I've ever seen one. Cameo then, in an attempt to save her family, recklessly loses her powers, and guess what you have to do? Yep, that's right, regain them, and that is pretty much the entire game. Sounds fantastic, does it not? One of the most irritating parts of the game, in my opinion, are actually the controls, or at least the choice of how controls work. You use the triggers in order to attack while in your elemental warrior phases, and my word is, is it difficult. You use each trigger, usually is assigned a different attack, for instance in Pummelweed, each trigger is punching with each hand. In Chiller, you you aim with one and you fire with the other. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Well, using the triggers to attack, especially in the most heated battle scenes, battle fights, is incredibly difficult and not particularly responsive. I mean, pushing the trigger all the way down is far more difficult than just tapping a button to quickly attack or quickly switch between it. It makes the combat somewhat slow and drawn out, and it actually makes it really, really difficult. You switch between warriors using the face buttons, which is fine and dandy, and I mean it works fine. You can switch back to Cameo pressing A any time, and you can have three of your elemental warriors on. But I can't help but feel that the D-pad would have been an extra, or better choice. I mean, why are we only using three buttons when the Xbox controller has far more? And why are we only allowed to map three elemental warriors when we clearly need to use more than one, or more than those three at the same time? It doesn't really make sense that we're not using any of these buttons. However, even if the controls are cumbersome, they are workable, and although it takes practice, they are okay and you can play through the game. Now the biggest and most irritating thing is pushing an object in this game, which you do have to do a lot. You have to push balls into holes to finish puzzles or things into fans, and yeah, the engine really does not allow for it. There's no real pushing animation, and so things just tend to rebound off you, and my word, it may not sound so bad, it just gets unbelievably irritating. So is it a long game? Not by any stretch of the imagination. My walkthrough took about 8 hours and that was completely blind and without skipping any cutscenes or discounting any loading times. So it was probably more like 6 hours of gameplay, which really is nothing for a mainstream game these days. Especially if you paid the whole 40 quid or 60 dollars for it. There are some side quests though which should lengthen your experience, although they're not obvious or necessary as part of the gameplay. 
Cameo isn't really one of those games that really makes you want to keep playing and play through the side quests, which doesn't really help, especially when I was playing I felt like I wanted just to press on and get the game done, which really isn't something you want to do. The co-op mode though is nice, and it's actually quite fun to be able to play with your friends both offline and online, which really should, I feel, be included in more games. There are also collectible fruit power-ups which are man not mandatory, but will help you in the long run depending on whether you want to do it or not. The graphics in the game are actually really nice and do show off the Xbox potential, especially considering it's one of the launch titles. It is by far one of the better launch titles in that sense. There is a huge range of environments ranging from dense woodland areas to icy cold mountain tops, which is really nice, but they do feel thrown together as if, you know, it's just for showing off the capabilities of the Xbox 360, which it may very well be. Everything is incredibly colourful though, and if you're not that kind of person, then you're not really going to enjoy it. I mean, you sometimes feel sick of having this multicoloured rainbow-like effect on absolutely everything. However, there are some really, really nice particle effects, especially with some of your champions and some of the things going on, and there are a lot of things happening on the screen at the same time, which is very impressive considering how old this game is. However, the loading times do reflect the fact that there is a lot going on, and it kind of sucks to have to wait for a couple of 30 seconds, 40 seconds before anything can actually happen. In my opinion, Cameo is not a bad game. It's just definitely not a game for everyone. It cosmetically looks beautiful. I mean, the scenarios, especially near the beginning, look really, really nice. However, it, it does get a little bit samely, especially when you go up a mountain top or in a dark cave, and yet you're still getting hit by rainbow super lighty things. Yeah, it's not always the best. There are loads of different attacks with each elemental warrior, which is nice to see, and it gives you a great range and diversity in your attack patterns. But the controls make it ridiculously difficult to do anything. You're also it's slightly questionable with some of the design choices for the elemental warriors. I mean, we have a token dragon. There's no need for the dragon, but they just throw it in there because dragons are cool. You also got weird tentacle creatures and other things that, you know, we don't really need. We get a lot of doubles of certain elements. For instance, there's two fire guys, two grass guys. Yeah, you can see where I'm going with them. The puzzles themselves are actually pretty good. I mean, they're definitely rare-esque. And in that sense, it's good. They're not difficult to work out, but they're fun to do nonetheless, unless they involve pushing anything. From there, though, the game does tend to fall down. The story is lacklustre and unbelievably forgettable. I mean, I barely know what was going on, and I didn't really care, to be honest. The controls are um, stupidly frustrating. I mean, they are the most irritating thing I've seen in a game for a while. Using the controls, the analog triggers for anything is just like, Bleh. But overall, the game isn't bad. It's one to try if you're into that kind of thing, but I would stay away if you're not. It's not Rare's best work, but it's not the worst either. So, in my opinion, it deserves a 6.5 out of 10.